And we'll repeat that headline. 250,000 and 35 votes counted already in Alaska, maybe as many as another 47,000 to count. But with 250,000 votes in, it is the Democrat Begich leading the Republican incumbent Stevens by three votes. In the executive branch transition, meanwhile, one really tasty bit of fluff for you tonight, but first... The substance. The transition office today announcing leadership teams to assess the departments of state, defense, and treasury, and to prepare President-elect Obama and his nominees to take over. Former Senator Sam not only informally advising the defense transition, despite initial reports to the contrary, former Clinton Secretary of State Warren Christopher not at all involved in that agent's switch over, agency's switch over. Christopher's successor, Madeleine Albright, though, along with former Republican Congressman Jim Leach, have been asked by Obama to attend this weekend's Superpower Economic Summit, at which many foreign leaders Leaders were hoping to meet Obama himself. The president-elect's camp saying, quote, there is one president at a time in the United States, so the president-elect has asked Secretary Albright and Congressman Leach, an experienced and bipartisan team, to be available to meet with and listen to our friends and allies on his behalf. Finally, the fun. After meeting with Obama today, tomorrow, Joe Biden, the vice president-elect, and his wife at 5.15 p.m. will have a private meeting with Mr. and Mrs. Cheney. Following the private meeting at the vice president's official residence, the Navy Observatory, the Cheneys will then give the Bidens a tour of the historic home, including the secret vault, the torture chamber, the shredder, the other secret vault, the other torture chamber, the rack, and the Iron Lady, which just needs a squirt of WD-40 every month or so, or else the hinges squeak. Finally, Cheney will take Biden way, way down to the wine cellar to see Cheney's cask of Amontillado. For the love of God, Montresor, let's bring in MSNBC political analyst Richard Wolf, also, of course, senior White House correspondent for Newsweek magazine. Richard, good evening. Good evening, Keith. Is, is there any way that a night with the Cheneys could be anything short of just hilarious? <laughs> You've obviously been over for a game of canasta or two. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's known for his um, small talk and his big shot, so I, I'm sure it will be wild for everyone. <laughs> That's right. One word, uh, Mr. Vice President-elect, one word of advice. Duck. Duck, uh, yes. The, the lead in the Washington Times today read, the Obama transition is starting to look more and more like Clinton world. And obviously, uh, considering the source, everybody knows what that's supposed to mean as political red meat. What would it mean practically? Well, look, if you're going to have anyone with any experience, then you need to reach back as Democrats into the Clinton team. Uh, it, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Remember that the Clintons suffered because they had no people of Washington experience when they first came to town. And uh, in fact, they made an active effort to, to keep at a distance anyone associated with the previous Democratic administration, in other words, the Carter White House. Um, they had to spend lots of time correcting that. So I, I don't know that you should read into this that there is going to be a Clinton-style approach to government because what you need for that is that extra special ingredient X, which is the Clintons. And obviously, they're not going to be there. There were uh, remarkably few leaks during the campaign from the Obama campaign part of it. it, it we now seem to get uh, dribs and drabs from the transition. Nothing huge, but they knocked down just tonight another report from CNN that David Bonnier would be joining the team. Um, more importantly than why there are a few leaks now, why do they all seem to have been pretty much wrong? <laughs> uh, you know, there was one leak out of this transition, and people at the highest level of the transition were very unhappy about it, and that was Rahm Emanuel, uh, the only news we've really had out of this transition. Remember, that leaked even before the election, so uh, they've kept a very tight lid on things, and, uh, you know, when you look at the leaks just today, Sam Nunn, the story was uh, materially wrong. Uh, Warren Christopher, it was even more wrong. So uh, you've got a lot of uh, very highly pressured journalists who uh, want to break some news and sources that are really not giving them much. Although the transition is a fairly broad and sprawling group, the number of people who really know what decisions are being made is very, very small. So you can source things to people associated with the transition, but they may not actually know very much. Let me ask you, Richard, about the breaking news we have tonight out of Alaska with this, suddenly this senatorial race, 250,000 votes uh, with one ahead by three. Is, is the Obama transition team too worried about January 20th to be focused on this? Would they have been caught flat-footed on this, or did they know about it the moment that those, uh, those canvassing returns came in from Alaska this afternoon long before the press did? Well, I think everyone's surprised by how it's shrunk, and obviously it means every vote really does count. Uh, but I, I think there has been at the DNC level and also folks associated with the Obama campaign, now the transition, moving resources over there. I mean, they really care about how close they can get to that 60-vote 
uh, total in the Senate. So um, people are aware of it, they're engaged in it, just as they are with uh, the situation in Georgia. Uh, Obama's going to need 60 votes at several points, so this is really important. And how involved are they, and, and to the, what degree would they be involved in those two, two states and in the Al Franken uh, runoff in Minnesota, or the recount anyway, not a runoff, where, uh, would, would whatever they be doing be the, the, the iceberg with 90% of below water? Well, you're looking at legal resources. Uh, you know, there's a, a lot of work to make sure that things happen at the local level in terms of the recount, as we found in Florida as well. Uh, there are strategic issues in terms of how you play it out through the press. So I, I think there are lots of different levels that's going on. But the transition work itself, I mean, this isn't the, the most senior people around Obama who are dealing with this. This is more about the party structure kicking into gear. Our own Richard Wolf, Senior White House Correspondent for Newsweek Magazine. As always, Richard, great thanks. Thank you, Keith.